Raise your hand if you have ever bought flowers. Is your hand up? I, I can't tell. This is a pre-recorded video. But if you're like me, you buy flowers every year because they make such reliable Mother's Day gifts. But what if your flowers came with a hidden environmental cost? At the base of many floral arrangements is a block of floral foam. And whilst it looks green, floral foam is actually made of plastic. It breaks down into microscopic pieces that you can see here. And we call these microplastics. Most of us will wash these microplastics down the sink. But from there, they travel to our rivers and our oceans where they interact with invertebrates tiny animals that don't have a backbone, but do play important roles in aquatic food webs. I wanted to know if these floral foam microplastics could harm aquatic invertebrates. So, like any scientist with a research question, I began researching on my computer. I was confident that scientists before me had already answered this question, but I found nothing. There was a lot of information about how other types of microplastics affected animals. Plastics like polyethylene that you find in your kitchen. There was lots of studies about how polyethylene microplastics affected animals. But floral foam is chemically very different. It's made from a phenol formaldehyde plastic. And the effects of this type of microplastic were completely unstudied. To find out if floral foam microplastics harmed invertebrates, I had to transfer my research from my computer to my lab. In the lab, I investigated three pathways through which microplastics could harm animals. The first pathway I looked at involved the chemicals inside the microplastics. The main chemical in floral foam is phenol, and I wanted to know, could this phenol leak out of the microplastics into the surrounding water? If it did, this could harm animals. Regular water has very little phenol in it, and I found that adding foam microplastics to the water increased the phenol content by up to 70 times. There was no doubt that these floral foam microplastics were leaking chemicals. But were these phenols harmful? To test, I used the aquatic invertebrate Daphnia. Daphnia is used across the globe by scientists to test the effects of chemicals in water. I found that Daphnia absorbed the phenol across its skin. At low concentrations, the phenol from the microplastics acted like an anesthetic. It took away Daphnia's ability to swim, and the animals sat on the bottom of the tank, unable to move. At high concentrations, the phenol actually killed the Daphnia. This was evidence that foam microplastics could cause harm through the chemicals inside the plastic. The second pathway that I investigated involved ingestion. In much the same way that a whale eats plastic bags, were micro-sized invertebrates eating microplastics of floral foam. To check, I collected invertebrates from freshwater and coastal locations around Melbourne. And in the lab, I offered these animals meals of floral foam. To see if they ate those meals, I used a microscope to investigate their tiny digestive system. Let's look down the microscope at Daphnia, that small invertebrate we just met. This Daphnia is hungry. The red arrow is pointing to its empty, transparent intestines. Now, let's compare that to a Daphnia that was offered floral foam microplastics. This Daphnia's intestines are full of green foam. Still down the microscope, let's look now at some marine invertebrates. On the left, we have the invertebrate Alocestes. Alocestes normally eat seagrass, but look to where the red arrow is pointing and you'll see evidence that Alocestes also eats green foam. And on the right-hand side, we have the tiny brine shrimp Artemia. If you are a child of the 90s, you know Artemia as a sea monkey. Again, look at the red arrow and you will see the telltale green inside Artemia's intestines that tell us this animal ate floral foam. I saw floral foam in the intestines of 
all six invertebrate species that I tested. Now, interestingly, eating floral foam didn't kill these animals, but previous studies have documented that a belly full of microplastics will cause these animals to grow more slowly and produce fewer offspring. The third and final pathway that I investigated involved cell damage. Could floral foam microplastics damage the cells of the animals eating those plastics? To find out, I delved deep inside the cell to measure the antioxidant enzyme catalase. Catalase facilitates reactions that protect cells from damage. So in this way, it acts like medicine for a cell. Animals have a limited supply of catalase. The more cell damage they experience, the smaller an animal's catalase supply will be. This means that I can use catalase to measure how much cell damage floral foam is causing. I also wanted to know if any cell damage was caused by the phenol that leaked out of the microplastics, or was it caused by the physical presence of the microplastics in the intestines, or both? I used four different groups to test this in my experiment. Now, strap yourself in because we are going to look at a graph. You can see from the picture down the bottom that the animal I used for this experiment was a marine mussel. It's very common across lots of beaches in Melbourne and you'll find it on more than a few Melbourne dinner plates. Mussels that were in the control group had about seven and a half units of catalase. These mussels spent the experiment in clean seawater, so they represent the amount of catalase inside healthy mussels. The next group of mussels were exposed to the phenols that leaked out of the foam microplastics. If phenol was causing cell damage, I would expect these mussels to have less catalase than the control, and that's what I found. The next group of mussels ate floral foam microplastics that were cleaned of any phenols. These mussels are experiencing just the physical presence of foam microplastics inside their intestines. These mussels also have less catalase than the control, so they are also experiencing cell damage. The final group of mussels were exposed to foam microplastics with the phenols inside. These mussels represent what they would encounter out in the environment if they came across foam microplastics. And this group of mussels has the least amount of catalase of any of the groups. So we can expect them to be experiencing the most cell damage. Now, if you are a scientist, you are at this point consumed by a burning question. Where are the asterisks? Where are those tiny little stars that sit above the bars to tell us that these differences in catalase are statistically significant. They aren't there. What I have in this graph is a strong trend and it suggests that as we move through the groups, the animals were experiencing more and more cellular damage. But this trend fell short of statistical significance. And what this means is that I need to do more research to be absolutely positive of what I'm seeing. So now I can answer my question. Now I knew that floral foam microplastics could harm animals because they leak toxic chemicals and because they are eaten by those animals. There was also very strong evidence to suggest that foam microplastics cause cell damage. There is good news to come of this research. This work has found its way to florists through media outlets and industry magazines. And now, more florists than ever are choosing to ditch floral foam and instead adopt more sustainable alternatives. And Melbourne Polytechnic, the institute that will train our future florists, is considering whether they should remove floral foam from their compulsory curriculum. Now it's your turn. Now that you know how floral foam microplastics can affect animals, Choose not to buy flowers that have floral foam at the base. By making this simple choice, you'll guarantee that your next Mother's Day gift does not create a gut full of plastic problems for our precious invertebrates.